I'm Dr. Jeff Langmaid here with Dr. Jason Deitch and welcome to The Smart Chiropractor where each and every week we break down in 30 minutes how you can be a smart chiropractor. We believe that ties into building stable and predictable income. We call it a payday practice and today we are talking all about why your patient education is not enough. This is a topic that really touches on every aspect of how a doc is marketing and or advertising within their practice. We believe in monthly campaigns, weekly topics, daily posts, but let's start right with when we say a doc is having patient education issues in their practice, what does that mean? What does that mean to you? Wow, there's a lot of places we can go with that. <laughs> um, you know, let's start with just some of the basics. You know, typically most of us learned that patient education was the equivalent of we've got to educate people about chiropractic. Um, which immediately starts with the concept of, I need to tell you what I want you to know. I'm teaching you what I think you should know, right? Now, there's very few people in the public, let alone chiropractors, who would raise their hand if you asked them the question, would you like to be educated about chiropractic? Not today. <laughs> thanks, but no thanks. I went to school already. Um, it, it, it's just the right intent, but the wrong application. And what I mean by that in today's world uh, is that, you know, most people are dialed into that radio station, WIIFM, what's in it for me. Um, and if you start wanting to teach me about what you sell, unless you're teaching me about something about me, I'm too busy to listen to something about you. Generally speaking, that's how most people are. Um, in fact, Everybody's not listening to this podcast right now for that exact reason. Right, right. You know, uh, there are some that go, wait, you're teaching me about something about my practice, how to grow my practice, how to serve more people, make more money, have more stability, have, therefore have a happier life. Tell me more. As opposed to, let me tell you all about how you should be using social media the way I think you should be using social media. So that's the difference is we're really need to be more relevant to people. And that's a lot of different things. Number one, you know, education is, first of all, of all, a message, right? What message are we putting out? Are we pushing our message or are we building curiosity for wanting to learn more about how their lives can be better? That's a, that's a pull message as opposed to a push message. So one, what's the message? Two, what are the vehicles what are the channels? What are the ways you're getting that message to people? So it'd be like, oh, well, you know, I send out a, send out, I mail out a newsletter. You know, that's patient education. Um, I got a whole beautiful rack of brochures. You know, that's patient education. Uh, I have a pre recorded video that I send to everybody. That's patient education. All that's true. But the question really, you know, tends to be, is it effective? Is it really accomplishing the goal you want it to? And, and it really should be designed to do several things. Um, you know, I, I'm a fan of the saying, make new friends and keep the old. And most chiropractors are just addicted to needing new ones. And the reason they're addicted to needing new ones is because they forget to keep the old. And that's really, I think, where the, I'll say the opportunity, I probably wouldn't even refer to it as patient education anymore, but that's what most chiropractors think about it as. Um, that's sort of the industry term. You know, I gotta get some patient education. I'll buy a brochure, I'll buy a video, I'll buy a DVD, I'll buy you know, something that will educate them about chiropractic. The reason it's not enough is because in today's world, if you're gonna be a smart chiropractor, understand that we're living in a mobile, hyper-connected, instant gratification world of you know, people that are, that are, you know, looking for what's in their best interest. Um, and unless we're crafting our message, we refer to it as teaching and inviting consistently, unless we're putting out a message that's relevant for them consistently in the channels they want to receive. You know, some of us, we limit our, you know, text only to friends and family, right? We limit our email only to, you know, business and so on. Uh, we limit our social only to, you know, maybe brands or inspirational messages, right? There's things I get on Facebook that I don't want to get on Instagram. There's things I get on Instagram I don't want to get on Facebook or email or somewhere else. 
So in today's world, the concept really isn't about the technology first, it's about the message first. And that's really our approach is we go, what's the message people should be hearing from you that's going to evoke what you want, which is not just like, yes, I'm in pain, yes, I have insurance, yes, I'll not go to work to come on in today, which is really what most messages have been, but is really maybe a more mature, longer term approach to things, which is, yeah, I'll follow you on social because I like to wake up inspired in the morning and I'm on social anyway. And, you know, that whole idea of you making Facebook healthy for me sounds pretty cool. I, I'm on Facebook every day, all day. I keep reading it's dangerous and harmful. You're going to make it healthy for me? Sign me up. And in time, I'm going to get to know you if I don't already know you. In time, you know, with the teach and invite consistently methodology, I'll probably see on social one of your monthly campaign invitations to maybe watch a video instead of an inspirational post, which may get me curious enough to want to watch a webinar or want to set up a telehealth appointment or come on in because, well, wouldn't you know it, I'm not in pain, but that performance thing really is interesting to me. And boy, today we got to make sure we're as healthy as we possibly can be. And I never saw a chiropractic ad before that told me that. So the new model really is, you know, I'm going to call it a more mature model. Advertising and quick ROI to me is, is like my kids who go, you know, when I give them the choice of, and it's been done on research and science with kids, would you rather have one marshmallow now or two marshmallows later? I'll take one now. <laughs> <laughs> That's unfortunately what most chiropractors do is you, would you like any new patient who's in pain and has insurance to come in now? Or would you like to actually once and for all start building an awareness, not just about what chiropractic is, but what you are and what you do as a chiropractor, not just about what a subluxation is and what your technique is all about and what technology you use, but what impact any of that would have on my life now and in the future and the people in my life. Those are the things that are valuable to me and most chiropractors, patient education tends to be very limited to pushing their agenda, pushing what they sell, pushing what I want you to know, as opposed to building curiosity because of what you want to learn and building a following of people that are learners that ultimately keep learning from you and either become clients or refer friends and family to be clients and in most cases, both. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I think, you know, when we tie it back to the, the campaigns, it's really about coordination. It's about effectiveness and it's about coordination as well because so many docs out there, it's just they have like this hodgepodge type thing, right? You know, where it's, you know, that one message is, you know, they have somebody who services their screens in their office and they have, it's a completely, it's different fonts, different designs, different messages going on there. They try to do something on Facebook whenever they have the time and it's ill coordinated there. As we talked about with email and newsletters, there's one that goes out, well, who knows how long, yeah, not very often, but they try, you know. I think. <laughs> and, and that ends up just being a very challenged situation. It's just not best practice. I mean, from any, from really any perspective whatsoever. It's the flea market approach, right? You walk down the aisles and you just never know what you're going to get next. Right. You know, maybe it's good, maybe it's not, but you know, it's pretty random. And, and that's, and it's hard to gain any traction. That's it's right. like, it actually pl places downward pressure on all of your marketing. It's harder for each channel to be effective because it's not coordinated with the others. That's exact. That's exactly the deal. And, 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 what I think people, chiropractors need to understand is it's really your message first and then your distribution technology channels second, as opposed to the way most are, you know, doing it now, which is what you're saying, you know, oh, I buy my website from that company. Uh, I buy my posters from a different company. I buy my, uh, you know, SEO from a different company. I buy my, you know, all from different places. And, you know, my screen's different than my, uh, and ultimately, what you really want to have in today's day and age, what I'd call the, the Nordstrom experience versus the flea market experience, is a coordinated approach, right? Uh, that it's, you know, holiday sale throughout the store, right? Not just the men's department or the housewares department. And the same kind of thing, you know, if you've got a message, 
there, there's two parts to this. One is the coordination across all your channels. So you look professional as you should, because you are a professional. Uh, and two is the idea of keeping people engaged. You know, it's been said years past when, you know, when I was sort of being mentored, one of my mentors once told me, you know, the reason people will leave you in your practice, that is, is ultimately either they get out of pain when, you know, they didn't learn enough about why they'd want to stick around more, or they outgrow you. And I was like, what are you talking about? And what they meant was that everybody wants to learn more about how they can be better at what they are doing, right? Better life, more pleasure, less pain. I, I want a better life in some way, fill in the blank there. And chiropractors who limit their patient education and marketing just to the people they want to get in the door, just to the new friends side of the equation, are going to find people leave because they're like, I know that. I went to your workshop. I read your brochure. I saw your newsletter. It's pretty similar every month. Um, I got it and I'm ready to grow and it doesn't seem like you're giving me much more information. There's not a variety. It doesn't continue. It's not sort of continuing education is probably the best way to say it. You're like, you got your quote degree. But people actually want to keep on learning. Learning is an essential part of, of what people do. And the challenge is we just don't not even compete in that marketplace. Pharmaceutical industry knows it really well. They just keep shoving their message down our throats, you know, against most of our desire, but they package it beautifully. They inspire us. They buy the news commentators to teach us, you know, new research that theoretically is going to make our lives better and so on. And they've mastered this game. I mean, they've got every channel dialed in and there's a new campaign on a regular basis. And, you know, we just keep living in sort of the, you know, my, I'll say kids, you know, mentality of, is it going to bring me a new one? No. You know, where's my marshmallow? Uh, and, and there's just much more to it. Yeah. And I'd like to break down some of the monthly campaign strategy and, and weekly topics, I guess, uh, to really make it practical for everybody to understand where we're going with it. Uh, for when you talk about flea markets, I'm like, where can you get a baseball card, a switchblade, and a funnel cake? <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> flea market, <laughs> all in one stop. Um, but but when, when we talk about monthly campaigns, you know, on, on, on subsequent episodes, we'll break down some specialty campaigns. But there's sort of core monthly campaigns that I think are really, really important. And when we think about monthly campaigns, weekly topics, and daily posts. I'll give an, exa an example of that. You know, we really like to think about, I know we do a lot of strategy on this, is alternating between sort of body regions and lifestyle. So a month, a monthly campaign, a month would be devoted to a body region, let's say, you know, neck, low back, so, so to speak. And then you'd go with the month that's in, in between, let's say, neck and low back, just as an example. In between that might be sports performance, right? So that's more lifestyle. And then let's focus on cervical spine. Let's say we were having a month that cervical spine. We have a month of cervical spine with smart chiropractor every year because it's a big topic, right? Now, then we talk about the weekly topics under that monthly campaign of month is we're talking all cervical spine. So it's like, gosh, a month devoted to that. Yeah, the, the way you do it is then you break down different aspects of that each week. So a weekly topic example would be, is my arm pain coming from my neck? Now, we know that as cervical radiculopathy, but the important point to think about that in terms of what's the consumer language, right? And then another week might be devoted towards posture and tech neck, right? Things like that. But you're breaking down and analyzing each week different aspects of your monthly campaign. And then you have the daily post to support that. And that's the coordination, I think, that really from what we've seen, um, not really we brought it from outside of chiropractic because many of the most successful organizations, they don't wake up every day wondering about what they're going to talk and post about. They have a marketing strategy. They have, they spend, you know, untold dollars on, you know, summits, opportunity, internal meetings to strategize how they're going to go about their messaging. And many chiropractors have blank sheet of paper syndrome. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and that's where the smart chiropractor has solved this, but where we'd also encourage anybody listening and watching to really think about things in terms of campaigns. You know, one of the just simple ways to translate if people are like, what? Uh, you know, I think of the, I, I, I'm going to say he's probably the most successful comedian of all time would be Jerry Seinfeld, right? And so there's a difference between weekly episodes of Seinfeld 
and watching the same Chris Rock show over and over and over again as a rerun. It's the same show. I think most chiropractors are doing one show over and over and over again where you're like, oh, I already saw that. That was, that was hilarious. You know, one of my favorites. It was great. But I want to watch something new. And that's really, I think, part of, and it actually does two really valuable things. I can honestly say one of the, one of the driving forces of me, I'll say retiring from practice, was I got bored repeating the same things over and over and over and over and over and over. It felt like, you know, all I could do was say A, B, C. I couldn't even put words, sentences, paragraphs, and stories together because all I was able to do, and this is 15, 20 years of pre-social media, I didn't have these tools. You know, people weren't doing email. People barely had a cell phone. It cost a fortune, right? So that's part of this whole deal is that today's world is totally different than probably our mentor's world when they didn't have access to these things and the world was different. So one of the reasons I, I wouldn't call it burnt out, but I just, I'm like, this is kind of boring. You know, I mean, I, I just, I like to teach, but all I'm doing is the same thing every day, all day. And many of them felt it too, right? So it does two things. It, really helps your audience continue to grow with you. You know, there are a lot of seasons of Seinfeld and most of us wish you would have continued, right? Um, versus saying, saw, the re saw that already, it's a rerun. But it keeps the doctor fresh, keeps the comedian fresh, right? After a while, even the comedians go, I can't do the same show every day, all the time. My goodness, you know, musicians, same thing, right? So there's something to the creative expression I think part of the challenge culturally is that chiropractors tend to identify themselves as technicians more than, you know, doctors. And when I say doctor, I mean doctor means teacher. And I really think it'd be very healthy for our profession to prioritize that you're a teacher first and a technician second. And if you do your teaching right, you'll have earned the right to be the technician to all those people. But if your premise is, I'm a technician, then you've got to rely upon other teachers or deep discount ads of people who already think they want whatever your technical skill is. Like you go, hey, I'm a chiropractor. You know, you want to come see me. Nine, if not 10 out of 10 of people will go, I'm not in pain, I'm fine. And yet, that's the best part. So, you know, this is one of those, uh, for, for, for many, I'll even say decades, I, I'm old enough to say that at this point, uh, I used to get so frustrated at the world. I'd, I'd say things like, isn't it ridiculous that people don't care about their health? And it, why would I say that? Well, because I give them all the information and I'm right and I even give them the science and yet they do something different and they don't accept my care. Therefore, they must not care about their health. Well, how self-centered of me, right? How, how could that, of course they care about their health. I'm not doing a good enough job communicating to them the value beyond ABC, ABC. And so it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, but hopefully we can break that cycle. And, and what, what's driven this new approach, monthly campaign, weekly topic, daily posts, are all these new technologies. Uh, and unfortunately, too many chiropractors are, are listening to their mentors who were extremely successful, trained under different circumstances, have a different level of financial reserve because of the decades that they've been doing what they've been doing in the old style way. Uh, and not enough new docs are learning these new approaches. Um, and even the ones that are, aren't necessarily, they're like, oh, you know, I'm into Instagram and I do stories but they don't know how to use email and websites and the concept of campaigns to tie it all together as a coordinated campaign. So the new world really is messaging or content first that then gets coordinated across all your channels. And that's the new world. And it's, um, it's simple, not easy. Um, but that's our job is we make it easy for people to be able to implement and those that do love the results, love the outcome for their benefit, for their staff's benefit, teaches your staff to grow and learn more. And ultimately because you keep people longer because they keep growing with you over a longer period of time.
Yeah, Cam campaigns to me are really about that coordination and it's not being a, a one trick pony. When you can have your campaigns going through email, when you can, then you have, you know, adapted then, but put put on Instagram and adapted and put natively. So there's a couple of different things here. Number one, it doesn't mean that you are putting literally the exact same thing and sharing it cross platform. Exactly. Native technically is going to perform better when you look at the stats and the data. It also means that you know people consume differently on the different platforms. However, the 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 tangential benefit, the side benefit, side effect in, in some way, but it's a positive one of having a campaign is it enables you to diversify. If it's a camp, you know, most people think of campaigns, when we say campaigns, we mean that it is coordinated across multiple flat platforms and it has, again, the hierarchy of monthly campaign, weekly topic, daily post. It, it reduces your risk, right? So you get, you're get you getting, you're touching. It's certain people, hey, we know people, I'm only on Facebook, I'm only on Instagram, I'm only, I don't do any of that, but I look at email. You really want to have the coordination because you're not going to hit everybody on every platform. And you don't want to have, you know, be so reliant upon one platform that if and when something changes in the future, that you are completely up a creek. And again, the side benefit of all this is actually all of the independent platforms perform better when it's coordinated across the platforms. But it, as you said, it's simple, not easy. You really have to, and most docs just don't have the time, effort, or energy to think about it, right? You know, again, it's like running a practice is, is challenging in so many different ways. What gets, you know, I think, and many docs understand that they they might not know everything about that, but the, the challenge and the gritty aspect of it is then they'll just default to somebody in the office that maybe is a front desk staff or maybe the office manager to manage those types of things and create it all from scratch. Yeah. And, and that person might even have less understanding of how to execute the market itself, you know, really every aspect that you you need to know. I mean, it's it is simple, but it's not easy to understand and coordinate. But when you do, you start to achieve such better results. It's my favorite part about this conversation, which is that, you know, it it is the easiest way to build momentum. And what I mean by that specifically is, you know, it is a challenge, right? It's like, what do you build if you don't have a blueprint, right? So if you have a blueprint, you know, instructions and a vision of what you're building, it's actually much easier because you're like, well, let's go to the blueprint. You know, where does this go? What should I do? Does this go here? Does it go there? When should I post a video? When should I post an, when should I send an email? When should I, you know, do what, right? I got an idea, here's an interesting article, where should I send it and when and who's watching? So what it does is it gives the ability to build momentum, it gives a structure, it gives an instructions that, and it also creates the right expectation for people. Going back to our TV, you know, metaphor. I became, as a follower, I knew every Thursday at 8 p.m. I was sitting down to watch Seinfeld. Why? Because it was predictable and it was reproducible and he built that pattern and habit. And, you know, the same thing should be true is people learn, you know, they have an expectation. Oh, I'll, I'll wake up to a daily inspirational Facebook message with you. I pick up my phone. I turn off my alarm. I check email, Instagram, Facebook, sometimes before I even get out of bed, typically before I get out of my room. And, you know, certainly within the first 30 minutes of waking up every day. Absolutely. You want to inspire me? I'm in, right? So that builds the expectation for me, but it also builds the demand for you. You're like, I created this expectation. Now I know I'm going to deliver this content because there's a, it's the perfect match. So you can then build momentum as you're building audience demand and as you're actually getting good at what you're doing. So some examples that we teach are, uh, you know, we've got our email that goes out, research that matters every week. Okay, that's great. We've got our daily dose of inspiration that's going on Facebook and Instagram. Great. But for those doctors that actually want to participate and engage, they'll often go, I had this great case last week. When should I, what should I do with it? When, what? They, they're like, they, they wrote it. Should, it, should it be a video? Like, what do I do with it? And the answer is when you follow these basically campaign concepts, 
you know, what, what we teach, you know, is, well, every Monday's Motivational Monday. Every Tuesday's Testimonial Tuesday. Every Wednesday's Wake Up Wednesday. Share something that's going to wake people up. Every Thursday is Tactical Thursday. Teach them something tactical and practical. Every Friday is Friday Favorites. So that when something comes up, like, oh, here's a new product I think is awesome. What should I do? You got a blueprint. You're like, well, that sounds like a Friday favorite. Hey, I, you know, I just got this great response from a patient. Do I just post it? Where do I put it? Oh, well, that sounds like Testimonial Tuesday. You know, here's a fascinating article about the immune system. And wow, I didn't know that. Wake up Wednesday. So it just makes it easier for the doctor and the staff because now everybody can have a coordinated system and it makes it easier for followers because they go, oh, I can't wait to learn something on Wake Up Wednesday. I look forward to whatever you're going to share on this Friday favorites. You know, that last Friday you shared with me that pillow. I bought it. That's awesome. What are you going to share with me this Friday? So there's just so many reasons why the structure, we all know the concept structure allows for function. If you don't have a structure, you're like an amoeba of content. You're like, so let's create some structure. Maybe, maybe they got to get a backbone and, uh, and understand how to build something that over time really becomes, I'm going to say, your number one asset. Uh, it used to be that your practice's value was based pretty much on the number of files you had because the assumption was that those files were inactive people that somebody who was willing to do some work could reactivate. In today's world, you are, the value of your practice is actually based on how many people you can teach and invite consistently. And if it's only, you know, I've got 5 million Facebook followers and nothing else, you're vulnerable. That's wonderful. But if Facebook changes their algorithm or you piss them off and, you know, you get set, I mean, you're vulnerable. So the most, the smartest approach to long-term value, creating value for them, and creating, building value for you is to build this audience so that you've got the ability to teach and invite consistently. If there's a new technique, if there's a new research paper, if there's a new product, if there's a new testimonial, if there's a new everything that is always new, you got a very simple system to go, got it, I'll do that Monday, that Tuesday, that Wednesday, that Thursday, that Friday. They know what they're watching. You know what you're doing. You can even do a month's worth of content in advance and delegate it to your staff to then post it at that time. There's just so many options when you have structure. Um, unfortunately, most don't. And therefore, most of them become you know, victims of you know, paralysis by analysis. Like, I got an idea. How would I? Where would I? When would I? What should I? Where should I? I got to go to the restroom. You know, and you never get to it. Monthly campaigns, weekly topics, daily posts, they give you the opportunity to execute. That's really, that's really what it is all about. And if, if you're listening, tuning in, watching, and you would like to learn more today about you, how you can improve the marketing in your practice, head on over to smartchiropractor.com slash genius. You will see an array of smart guides that will help you step up and improve your marketing. Also, if you have not left a rating or review for this podcast on iTunes, scroll on down. Be sure to hit how many stars you think we earned on this podcast. That helps us reach more and more people. For Dr. Jason Deitch, I'm Dr. Jeff Langmaid. We'll see you next week for another episode. Until then, bye-bye. This episode brought to you by The Smart Chiropractor. At The Smart Chiropractor, we solve the two biggest chiropractic marketing challenges, content and consistency. We combine an incredible content library with powerful automation tools to supercharge your marketing. The result, more new patients, more referrals, and more reactivations with automated digital content marketing. Here's what Dr. Matthew Barnhart had to say. We have loved this. We have already had five patient reactivations from the emails in one week. To learn more and get started, visit thesmartchiropractor.com today.